emoji. Hey, thanks for coming back. So today, um, I'm making a uh, a braised short rib. Now, people they don't understand the value of short ribs. Now, the grocery market, the butchers, they they're finally catching on. Before. Back in the day, you can get like 10 pounds of short ribs for like $3. Now, it's like 8 9 sometimes $12 a pound. Ridiculous. But, hey, I guess they want to gouge you, make their money. But anyway, I'm making this. Now, because of the time of day I'm making this, it's going to take me three days to do this. Okay? Now, if I wanted to get ahead of time and do it, when I should have done it, it would take me a day and a half. Uh, and most of that, the one day is marinade time, but then you have to cook it and chill it during the day. So that's why it's taking so long. That's why it's three days on this particular one. But this is what we're making. I know you saw the thumbnail. This is Mama Shaw's braised short ribs. Yeah. My mouth is watering because I'm about to get some too. So if you like this, hey, give me a thumbs up. Share it out. You don't have the thumbs up. Hey, but share it out. The technique is good. I try to explain it. And if I didn't explain it well, hit me in the comments. Let me know. Having said that, I hope you enjoy this. I got to eat. And she got to eat. And the peanut gallery is coming too. Yeah. You won't see it in this video, but I got word they're on their way to get some. Enjoy your day. Hey, this is Charles Sharon. That's the best elevated music I ever heard. All right, so relatively simple, you know, we have one white onion, we have two stalks of celery that I've already washed, we have two medium carrots that I've already peeled, Now I have some leeks, I washed them but I want to cut them up and soak them, here we have about seven garlic cloves, and here we have a few sprigs of thyme, and then we have a whole bottle of Cabernet. Sauvignon, okay? Cabernet Sauvignon goes very well, and we're going to be marinating our meat in it. So let's get this going. Let's cut this up so it'll be ready for the meat, and then we're going to go to the meat. All right, now, the first thing, I have some a bowl of water here, okay? Because I'm going to have the leeks soak in it. And you just want to rough cut them, because a lot of times, you know, dirt gets caught in here, so... I like to give them a pre-wash, and then I cut them up, and I have them soak in water just a few minutes, you know, so that all the individual layers can open up. That's why I do that. And then the dirt will sink to the bottom if there's any left in there. Now I have another bowl here with Ziploc in it. I'm going to put the remaining vegetables in that. Just cut the top off. Celery. Bottom. Now you just want to, just a rough chop. And into the Ziploc, this goes. Now, this is a two and a half gallon Ziploc, so this is one of the big boys. Or one of the bigger boys. I have bigger, but anyway. Cut the ends off. Carrots. Rough chop. Okay. Now the onion. Again, it's just a rough chop.
fake layer off. Maybe two, depending on the onion. And again, just rough chop. All right. Now our leeks. Yeah, make sure they're nice and rinsed and soaked here during this time. So this is, in essence, the second time I'm cleaning them. But they go in. So now we have about, you know, just about four pounds of short ribs. See? But on these short ribs, you have the bone side. I'm not going to take the membrane off, but you have the bone side. Then you have the fat side, and we're going to cut this off because there's uh, some tough uh, silver skin under there, and we don't want that. And we're going to cut it. We're going to cut it off, and then we're going to add it to our vegetables. Let's try to clean up any fat that's on here that you don't want to eat. And that's what we're doing. Uh, let me change knives. Man, fillet knife normally does good, but if you have a lot of fat, you run into an issue. Man, takes that right off. See, you don't want that. Man, you don't want that. Eh, maybe you do. Maybe you're one of those people that wants that, but in the house of straw, it's frowned upon. Now, for as long as we're going to be cooking this, a lot of this will render down. We just want to get that tough silver skin. See, you can see it real good here under the fat. You have the fat, then you have the silver skin. So we just want to take that off and it would be much easier if this was a whole piece instead of cut up into these little you know English bits that silver skin man it, it doesn't break down so it would be like chewing bubble gum doesn't matter how tender your meat is that silver skin will make it seem like you're chewing bubble gum. It also helps to have a very, very sharp knife when you're doing this. Right? See? So you can get that paper thin, that membrane off of there, see? Yeah, I could have froze this to make it easier to cut, but I've been so busy today that I would have ended up freezing it solid again. I didn't want to do that. Now, last but not least, for this marinade, we need to add our Cabernet. In with the Cabernet. The whole thing, the whole 750 milliliters. Mmm, smells nice. Okay. And our thyme. And our garlic. You don't have to cut the garlic up or nothing like that. Just add it. Seal her up. And this is going to go into the refrigerator. All right, so now this is going to go into the refrigerator for a minimum of six, seven hours. You can do it overnight. I'm going to be doing this overnight.
okay? Just every few hours, you know, just turn it so the marinade, the wine can get on all of the meat, okay? I use a Ziploc because it's just easier. Now, you may say, yes, I'm using a Cabernet uh, Sauvignon. Can I use a Merlot? Yes, you can use a Merlot. You can use a red wine. Uh, they're both red wines, but you can use a different red wine, right? It's just that a Merlot is going to give you more of a fruity hint, where the Cabernet uh, is more acidic, okay? If you're doing, if you're a marinating chicken, for example, uh, and something like that, use a Merlot, okay? If you're doing red meat steaks, hey, use a Cabernet. All right, let me get this in the refrigerator, and I'll see you uh, most likely tomorrow. Okay, so it's been another day. This is the next day, okay? So what we're going to do now, we're going to take the ribs out of the marinade. We're going to pat them dry. We're going to season them salt and pepper, right? Then we're going to dredge them in some flour so we can brown them. And we're going to drain the vegetables off of the Cabernet. And then we're going to saute the vegetables. And then we're going to add uh, the Cabernet back to it. So let's get to it, and this is what we got going. Okay, so like I said, what we need, tomato paste. We need a, a few tablespoons of tomato paste. Bay leaves, you know, four or five nice sized bay leaves. We're gonna need two quarts or eight cups of beef broth. Then we have our flour here, and we're gonna be taking our ribs out of the marinade Pat them dry, and we're going to season them with salt and pepper. So let's get this going right now. Okay, let's get our ribs out. All right, take the vegetables off of them. They should have a nice burgundy color to them because of the Cabernet. Now we're going to put paper towel on it because we want to dry it off. All right, put the vegetables back over there. Okay. with salt and pepper. And the salt. There you go. Pepper. just in flour. For our flour here, just want to hit all sides of the flour. The flour is going to allow us to have a nice little caramelization of browning on it to release that flavor. Strain the vegetables. Okay. Now 
with Brownlee's ribs. pot is hot. Uh, we want it to be at least 350 degrees, right? So, because uh, we're going to be searing it. See where we're at. Alright, yeah, we're good now. Now we're going to sear these, meat side down. Now, if you have to do multiple batches, by all means, do multiple batches. And you want to do this about, uh, about five minutes on the meat side, and then about two minutes on the other side. veggies We're going to saute these uh, for about a good seven minutes. It's on medium still. And from the juices, from the vegetables, as well as the residual uh, cabernet that's on here, it's going to deglaze the bottom of the pan. Can you see that? I don't know if you see it. Deglazes it. Nothing's on the bottom. That's what we want. So we're gonna let this go for like another six minutes here. And then we'll add the tomato paste. Okay, so now what we wanna add is like three tablespoons or so of tomato paste, right? Get that mixed in. And 
And now we want to add our Cabernet back to it. In. There we go. And we're going to be bringing this to a boil. You want it to be at a boil because you want to cook the alcohol out of it, you see? So I'm going to put the lid on it. I'm gonna let this go for a good five minutes so it can boil. All right, let's see, we got okay, so we got about another minute here. You want it to boil, so I mean, you want to boil the alcohol out of it. You're not trying to get no drunk people now. Come on. So about another minute, the tomato paste has been incorporated quite nicely, but quite nicely. Okay, now at this point, we're going to add our bay leaves, right? Get the bay leaves in there. We want that. Now we're going to add our short ribs back to this. Yep, nestle them in good. You want meat side up if you can get it. Okay. Get these little scraps because I'm petty. Now we're going to add our beef broth. All of it goes in. Now let this come to a boil and then we're going to put it in the oven. All right, so now what we're going to do, we're going to put this into the oven. It's been preheating this whole time at 350 degrees. We're going to put it in there for about three hours, okay? Um, and you want to check it eh, after the first, first two hours, every half hour after that, just to see if it's tender enough for you. Um, but the way I'm going to do it, because I know how everything's set up. Uh, I'm going to let this go for three hours, okay? And then I'm going to check it. It's probably going to end up going a good four hours before we get to the next step. So let me get this in uh, uh, the oven for you. Yep, she heavy. Okay. There we go. Okay, so now it's been in the oven for just over three hours. I checked it, the meat's tender. Now what we're going to do at this point, we're going to remove the meat and the bone. Well, don't really, if it falls off the bone, which it probably will, don't worry about it. We're going to remove it from the pot and then we're going to strain the vegetables. And then we're going to cool it and put it in the fridge. Cook them all. Let's get to it. You want to be careful. This is very hot and very heavy. Let's take the lid. Careful. Now what we want to do is search for and find a short rib. 
You want to be careful because this is hot, very hot. Do it slow, especially if you're doing it the way I'm doing it. I'm pouring towards me, which is not the smartest idea, but if you're careful, you're all right. All right, nice. Just to help it cool down a bit faster, because we're going to put this in the refrigerator, see? This is going in the fridge. You want to put it in there for like you know, four or six hours, but I'm going to have it in there overnight. And what's going to happen, all the fat is, that's floating on top, as it gets cold, is going to congeal and become hard. And I'll just be able to lift it right off. I don't have to worry about scooping or scraping fat foam from the top. I can just lift it off, throw it away, and then we can get to making the sauce the best sauce it can be. So I'll see you tomorrow. So it's cool now. The broth is cool. Now we're going to skim off the fat from the top of it. Now it's all congealed in the top. Makes it much easier. Uh, and then we're going to put it on the stove and we're going to let it reduce by a minimum of 75%. Now that could take, you know, hour and a half. That could take, you know, two and a half hours. You know, it just depends on how high your heat is and how big your pot is. Let's get to it. Okay. Foil off. So you can see the fat on top. We're just going to take our skimmer here. Just lift it right off. See that? I'm using the skimmer so I can get the fine particles as well. every single bit of it but the more you get the better your product is going to be at the end okay now we're going to put this into our pot our pot here I'm going to pour this into the pot, carefully, okay, and 
this goes on the stove to reduce. Let this go. Now this is gonna go, like I said, hour and a half, maybe two and a half. It might even take three hours. You never know. Um, but you just want it to reduce to your liking. So I'll see you once this reduced. Okay, so this has been going about two hours so you can see how thick it is now how far it's reduced look at this look nice nice you give it a little taste yeah that's delicious now what we're going to do now we're going to take our short rib and add it to it. Right? And it's going to take, you know, 20, 30 minutes on low to warm this through. And that's what we want. You know, you, you never want to rush this. Don't rush it. Just add it in. Some of the bones may fall off. That is fine. That is fine. Add them in. Get them all in. And even the little pieces of meat there. Now, I want to move it around. I want to make sure they all get covered. Put on low. So it'll heat through. And it also further enhance the sauce. Okay? So we're going to let this go for about 25 minutes, half hour, and then we'll be ready to plate up. Okay, let's get this plated up. First thing we're going to do is we're going to grab some potatoes, some mashed potatoes. We get a nice little spoon here. Get a nice little bed. Mashed potatoes. You know Mama Shaw loves her mashed potatoes. Okay. Now we're going to get the ribs, get a good rib out of here, not worrying about the bone, that they're going to fall off the bone, but if it doesn't, even better, All right, put that on there for, mm. there's one here with no bones, here let me just put a little bit of extra there for. Get a little sauce, a little gravy, right on it. Mm. Yeah, that's what we want. Now, if she wants more, obviously she can get more gravy. That's fine. Now, we're going to garnish this with a little bit of parsley. I ran out of the fresh parsley, but hey, the dry stuff works too. Here we go. Let's see what we got. All right, so here we have it. Our red wine braised short ribs. Oh man, the aroma in this house is excellent. Yeah, I sample some delicious. The sauce incredible. If you like this, give me a thumbs up. If you're not already subscribed, hey, hit the subscribe button. Right? Go 
join the peanut gallery. Our arms are open and we'll leave the light on for you even in the dark so you can find us anytime you want. Also, if we're not connected on Instagram, go to Instagram, put my name in, Shiraw Shiraw. Look for the gray cat and let's connect. I'm gonna get this to Mama Shaw. She's been waiting all day. She had a hard day at work, so let's let's do this for her. Thanks for watching.